passing for white. As you begin to awaken interdimensionally, mission control advises discretion. Keep a low profile, and act as white, as possible, unless you happen to be Chinese. A little common sense, is useful here. This is for your own safety. Don't forget, the cultures of this planet, are built on fear. They fear everybody, everything, and all differences. Moreover they kill in defense of those fears. Up until now it has been largely unnecessary for mission control, to caution you on this matter, since you have not had a clue, as to who you are and, why you are here. However as you begin to sense your true identity, be extremely careful. For instance, going up to someone, and casually saying hi, I am from Sirius, I understand you're a native, will not win you any friends, or influence many people. If you're lucky, they will just think you're nuts. If you're unlucky, they may commit you. Remember, you came here to dismantle fear, not to elicit it, so be cautious about cocktail conversation, and try not to alienate the aliens. Closet Cases Although you are in some danger, from the indigenous population, the greatest danger, you face is from other extraterrestrials, who refuse to awaken. The local alien population, for the most part, will be inclined to dismiss the claim, that extraterrestrials are in their midst by the millions, as a crock of biodegradable matter. They are so certain they know what is happening that they will probably miss what is happening until it has already happened. Because of the one-dimensional nature of their belief systems, the natives will be unlikely to launch any witch hunts. On the other hand, extraterrestrials, who are booking their genetic coding, are a bit more dangerous, and should be approached with caution. They are more likely to strike, than their cocks or counterparts. And if any witch trial, appears on the docket, they will undoubtedly have placed it there, as well as appointed themselves judges. The Messiah Complex. As you are awakening, there are some pitfalls we would like you to avoid. The most important one, is the dreaded Messiah Complex. Before mission members are completely in their multidimensional feet, this complex tends to have some appeal. Mission Control would like to take a moment, to make it a little less appealing. Being Christ and thinking you are Christ, are two different matters. If you only think you are Christ, you will then act, like you think Christ would act, which usually entails trying to save someone. Let us make one think very clear. This mission is not about saving anyone. All inhabitants of this planet are masters. Even the aliens are masters, who are here doing a brilliant job of mastering being aliens. Everyone on the planet knows the game, and everyone has made their decision. If a person has chosen to continue as a master of limitation, that is his or her inalienable right. Saving people from their rights is not the intention of this planetary mission. And having four ground crew members running around with messianic fervor, trying to rescue people from their free will, is not through any request of mission control nor by any mandate of the councils. The Earth has elected to evolve beyond limitation. However anyone, who opts to explore that process, further is free to do so, just not on this planet. Such people will be allowed to continue their experiments with limitation, and some other piece of planetary property, that is at a less advanced stage, in its evolution. The members of this mission, have chosen to master divine expression, instead of limitation, and are being asked to do so, on this planet at this time. It is critical, that you remember that one choice, is not better than the other. Do not, in your half-awakened state, and out of misdirected zeal, attempt to convert, anyone to the choice you have made. Instead be the choice you have made. Mission Control expects our members, to respect everyone's sovereignty, and decisions, we also expect you to stand in your full presence, and emanate your divine essence. In this manner, and in no other, you will have the power, to affect another's choice, to do the same. Your embodiment of spirit, is the only act, that will assist the mission in unfolding smoothly, and efficiently to its destined conclusion. The burden of spiritual significance. The burden of spiritual significance, like the Messiah complex, is a trap we advise you not, to get caught in. The problem with spiritual significance, is that it is a byproduct of spiritual ambition, and as such, it would best be your spiritual ambition to avoid. 
acts of spiritual ambition are, by their nature, devoid of spirit. They will only result in separating you from spirit, and therefore, the mission. This is not to say that we don't expect you to do anything of any spiritual consequence while you are visiting this planet. We do expect you to have a spiritual impact here, otherwise we would not have sent you in. However, becoming entangled in the importance of your acts will lead you into an identity that is less than who you are. You are here with one primary directive, to embody the spirit you serve. If you allow yourself to become sidetracked by your spiritual significance and lose yourself in the grandeur of who you are, you will simultaneously lose track of your real significance and fall short of this mission's goal. Remember that you are here to become a living expression of spirit. Nothing you do or say is an acceptable substitute for becoming who you truly are. The chicken slash head syndrome, as dysfunctional patterns are being dismantled and fear is being unceremoniously kicked out of the driver's seat by spirit, you may experience the chicken slash head syndrome. Our sources indicate that you have chickens in this planet, indigenous birds who are noted for running around after their heads have been cut off. This is our first exposure to chickens, but we find their behavior useful, so we have renamed the syndrome in their honor. The chicken slash head syndrome refers to the neurological phenomenon that a beheaded chicken experiences when its body continues racing around frantically as if something were still in control. This goes on for a short while until the neurological circuitry catches up with the fact that the bird is officially dead. This is precisely what can happen when fear is eliminated from your systems. Fear's neurologically patterned behavior may continue marching around for a while, acting as if fear were still in charge. You have two options in dealing with this condition. You can treat this vestigial behavior in the same way we have noticed you treat flies. This is also our first encounter with flies, but they seem to be just as useful as chickens. You may allow them to buzz around until they drop of their own accord, or you can swat them and get it over with. The only thing you should never do is identify with them. Fear and its pattern behavior is not and never was your identity. Fear is a parasitic life form that no longer has any biological business being on this planet. If it is helpful, think of fear as a fungus from outer space that successfully invaded eons ago and has been hosting off your systems ever since. Fear no more defines your being than a case of athlete's foot defines your body. So whatever course of action you choose to handle the syndrome with, remember that it's almost over and you're not it. Integrity, its care and maintenance. As a crawl in to this mission, you by definition have some pretty big handicaps. As you are asked to stumble out of your wheelchair and into an upright position, you may encounter some enticement to remain seated and rest on your handicapped privileges. Mission Control would like to take this moment to assist you to your feet. The biggest handicap that you suffer stems from the fact that this mission demands total integrity, while the cultures you represent demand little or none. The reason for this is that Earth cultures have one basic thing in common. They are all dysfunctional. Once a culture has decided which dysfunctional aspects it wishes to represent, it raises a flag to declare its position, packages its preferred brand of dysfunctionality for consumption at home and abroad, and passes it off as a national heritage to be proud of and protected at all costs. Because you have to claim some nationality in order to get in here, none of you has been spared an identity that is at least a million light years and exactly 180 degrees off from the truth. The temptation to remain dysfunctional arises from the fact that it has been such a thorough and arduous journey getting there. Somehow it feels wasteful to just check it. Because of this illusion of waste, you may find yourself clinging to false identities or codependent relationships that prolong the recovery act. These double-dealing relationships, whether with yourself or others, are based on a dysfunctional complicity that thrives on an unstated request. That request can best be expressed as, please don't disturb my sense of limitation. It may be Auschwitz, but it's home. The problem with maintaining this pact is that you cannot pass 
through the doors of the fifth dimension, leaving dysfunctional baggage, and there is no handicapped parking, nor any wheelchair access. All false identity must be relinquished at customs, where your belongings will be rifled, for contraband states of consciousness. These contraband states include dishonesty, manipulation, and the end all feigned limping, refusing to relinquish your survival identity, and a very hidden and holy agreement that was made out of fear and denial. Mission Control is aware of the courage that realignment with the truth requires, but we are also aware that no one will be successful in any attempt to smuggle a lack of integrity across the frontier of the new incoming civilization. Be gentle with yourself and with others during the time of your rehabilitation, but also be scrupulous in this matter because there is no room for deception. And remember, giving up your courage is willingly now is far preferable to being busted at the border.